Hey there, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I thought I'd share with you guys something a little bit different than what I normally do. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys the very first portfolio that I created and built, which allowed me to land my very first role at a big four in a tech position. The job I landed was a UX designer graduate role, but at the time of me applying for these roles, I was also looking into front-end development as well, and you'll notice this throughout the actual portfolio once we get into it. Please keep in mind as well that I did my degree in architecture, and you'll also notice this throughout the video as well. Um, so yeah, please keep that in mind um, that this is something that I actually studied um, which wasn't related to UX, UI or front-end development. And I added it in deliberately just to show employers some of the skills beyond um, what I was trying to get into. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video and I'll show you a little overview of what the portfolio looked like and what it consisted of. Awesome, so this is the landing page of my website. As you can see, um, there's quite a bit going on. We have this nice typing effect. We have these two CTA buttons where employers can go in to learn more about who I am. At the top, you'll also notice this fixed uh, nav bar where we have our homepage, which it is currently on. We have a portfolio section so users can view some of my work. We have a tutorials page, which is actually linked to the tutorials I make through YouTube, which I'm doing right now, even though it's not a tutorial, but I thought I should put that in. Um, we also have an about section where employers or users can actually learn more about my journey and my story. And finally, we also have a contact CTA where users can click on to get in contact with me. We also have this really cool illustration here that I created using my iPad with Procreate um, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And yeah, that's basically what the landing page looks like. As we scroll down, we have this really cool path effect that I created using JavaScript. Um, it took me a really long time to create that, but again, it's something that I'm really proud of considering it's my very first portfolio. So as we scroll down, it takes you to this really cool carousel um, effect with all the different areas um, my portfolio consists of. We have areas such as UX UI design, which is the role I actually landed. We also have a coding page so employers can see some of my coding skills. We have an area for graphic design as well, just to show some of the areas um, as an example outside of UX UI and coding. I also have an area in architecture since this is what I actually studied in university and just wanted to use that as a way to show some of the skills outside of what I'm currently doing. And yeah, that's basically it really. And as we scroll down, this nice path effect continues on throughout the home page. And on here is a small about section with a couple pictures just to show employers of what I look like and what I do. Um, a little blurb here describing what I'm currently doing and also a view more button. So if users want to learn more about my story, they can do so by clicking on that. As we scroll down, you'll also notice we have this footer here just so users have easy access to getting to the information they need, such as my portfolio, some of the socials I have, as well as my contact section. Awesome. So yeah, that's basically the home page. And what we'll do now is we'll move into my very first section of the portfolio, which is UX UI design. So let's do that right now. As we click on it, this is what the landing page looks like. Um, it's quite bland, but I just wanted to get all the information in one location so it's easy for users to navigate through. As we scroll down, you'll notice we have my very first case study that I created during university. Please keep in mind that this is completely self-taught. Um, so yeah, I did a lot of research on how UX works, um, how Figma works to actually create the mockups, and this is something I'm really proud of. And I do feel like because of this project, it really allowed me to land my very first job at a big four. Um, so yeah, let's, without further ado, dive straight in. So let's go to the CTA to check it out. So this is what it looks like. At the time, I was gonna build this out in uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but I knew this was gonna take way too much time. So I just decided to put in a PDF so all the information was in one location. It opens up to this nice intro screen. Um, 
with this really cool 3D model, which I created with Blender. Um, again, I could have done this using Spline 3D and I do have some tutorials on my channel. If you want to learn more about how to actually create these mockups, you can check my channel out in the description if you want. As we scroll down, so the project for this was I was basically redesigning an app that I was already using. And in this section, it sort of describes what it is, what the problem was and the solution that was required um, moving forward for this particular project. As we move down, I wanted to show users this was my process using the user-centered design uh, structure just so employers knew that I was following this industry standard process um, just to improve my chances of landing a job within this particular field. As we scroll down, since this was an app that I knew a lot of my friends and family were using and I was also connected to a Facebook group, I decided to interview some of those users to understand some of the pain points they were experiencing. And I highlighted them through these quotes here just to get a better understanding of what or how users were feeling using the app. So taking a very empathetic approach, as we move down, since I was connected to a Facebook group, I created a Google Forms um, page. So users could actually go on there and respond to the survey I created. Here are some of the outcomes of the demographics involved. Um, and this really allowed me to hone in into what a future state could look like. If we move forward and move down rather, we can see a competitor analysis that I also looked into. So just wanted to get a better understanding of where the current company was sitting as I was designing the app, just so I knew what features were needed in order to gain a competitive edge if this were to come to market. Based on all the research I did, I created these user personas to paint a better picture of where I was going. As we move forward, I also did a quick empathy mapping exercise just to really understand the current state and how users were feeling using a very empathetic approach. As we move forward, or rather down, sorry, um, we have this really basic user journey mapping, understanding, understanding the current state that users were facing when moving through the app as they went through uh, different pages and some of the different functions they were involved with. Um, so yeah, these sort of laid the foundations of what the current state was and led me into ideation, which is where I started to actually be creative. And this is where I really enjoyed and sort of showed employers really where the current state analysis resulted into these outcomes. Um, so I started off doing a user flow mapping, trying to understand how to make it as effective as possible for users to go through a particular app. I also drafted up a information architecture structure to understand how pages could work. And I do think um, by doing these two exercises, it really did allow the employers to really understand my thinking process. Moving forward, I also showed some very low fidelity sketches that I came up with on my iPad. Again, very basic sketches just to show employers my thinking process. As we move forward, we get straight into the high fidelity designs. Um, so for the actual designs, I came up with a very small design system, which involved heaps of different uh, font types, font sizes, a whole range of different color palettes that I decided to stick with. And finally, the final screens that I created in Figma. Yeah, this is an area that I'm really proud of and definitely the area where I really do think I sort of won the employers over. So yeah, definitely putting something like this in as part of your journey is really crucial into showing some of your design skills if that's an area you sort of want to specialize in. And moving forward, once I designed them, I created a prototype and decided to go back to some of the users I interviewed and started to analyze how they went through the prototype. I made some comments around uh, what they liked about the design, what they didn't like, so that if I were to go back and redesign, I could learn from these mistakes. Um, so at the very end of the project, I had a quick reflection of my experience and what I learned. And yeah, that's basically the end of the UX UI section. And this is sort of the area where I really do think um, allowed me to really get my very first job as a UX UI designer graduate. Awesome. So 
outside of UX UI design, I also was interested in going into front end development as well. So we're going to go straight into that now. So with front end development, again, during university, this is something that I was completely self-taught in. I learned the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and built a whole bunch of projects. Um, and these designs were actually based off a third party website known as front end mentor and the whole purpose of that website was to really train users how to actually build um, projects using various coding languages again here this was a to-do list app which i use with html css and javascript as we move forward we can also see my very first api app that i created which involved creating a url shortener app which was something i'm really happy um, with the outcome and something that I'm really proud of. I also did a really quick, simple page of an e-commerce site just to show employers my ability of actually creating those um, areas and that particular skill set. I also did an IP address API just showing employers my ability to work with map technology. I also did another API one based on quotes um, just a really simple quote api app just to show um, uses my ability to bring in data into an interface and yeah that's basically the front end development section again these projects are really basic but sort of laid the building blocks of what i could potentially go into and i use this when applying for front end development roles um, and i do think by having this as well as the ux ui pages um, it really did show employers my skill sets and ultimately improved my ability to actually land my very first job. So yeah, those are the sections and the areas where I really showed off to employers. Um, yeah, and definitely an area I'm super proud of. As we move forward, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of other areas in here, such as graphic design, architecture, and digital artwork. Um, we'll just go into graphic design just to show you guys some of the areas um, that I wanted to show employers. Again, some of the areas that I was working on just to show my skill sets beyond UI design. I wanted to show employers, hey, I can also do uh, a bit of 3D modeling and some basic graphic design skills if they actually want that in their company. And I do think by having and adding this in, it really did um, improve my ability of getting employed again some of these are very basic but yeah just a very rough overview of some of those areas that i was focusing on i also have a section for architecture again this is what i actually studied in university and there's a whole bunch of uni projects in here um, rather than putting them to waste i decided to add them in just to improve my chances of getting employed by someone um, and then I also have a section called digital artwork, which is a little area where I really enjoy making some artwork with photography and Photoshop. Again, just to show employers my skill set beyond UX, UI and front end development. Awesome. So that's basically the portfolio. And if we go into the about section, you'll notice that I have a little biography of who I am, what I'm currently doing and a little image of what I look like. So employers know um, what I look like as a person. And I do think having an about section is really important just so it paints a picture better um, and where you can really show who you are as a person. Uh, and I do think this really helped me out bring in that personal side of the portfolio rather than showing my work. So yeah, definitely something to keep in mind if you are also building out your portfolio. I also added in a contact section, which I think is really important as well, just so employers can actually um, contact you if they need via email. So yeah, that's basically the end of the portfolio. I hope you guys learned something. And if you're actually interested in learning how to build something like this, or at least some of the components involved, I do upload some tutorials on my channel every so often whenever I get the chance about design, UX, UI, and front-end development. So definitely hit subscribe if you are interested in learning more. So yeah, that's basically the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you all in the next one. See you later.